Well, hello everyone. Welcome once again to our input. Um, it's good to be able to be together. Um, and uh, yeah, I do hope uh, that uh, you're in a good place uh, wherever you are or whenever you are watching this. Um, I'm doing most of my notices now on the news thing that I do on Fridays. Um, so we're going to go straight into our input now. Um, it's going to be the same as normal uh, with a Bible reading, some thoughts about that Bible reading, uh, some prayers, the Lord's Prayer and a final blessing. Uh, I always think it's best to start with a prayer, so let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we do thank you for your presence here with us by your Holy Spirit. And we do pray that you help us now to worship you in spirit and in truth, to the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, for our Bible reading today, uh, we're in the book of Exodus, chapter 14, uh, and I'm going to begin at verse 5. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people and they said, what have we done? Letting Israel leave our service. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites, who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army. They overtook them, camped by the sea, by Pi, Harhiroth in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us? bringing us out of Egypt. Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot driver. Z the angel of the Lord, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. 
one did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry land, the waters forming a wall from them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers at the morning watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their left and on their right. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, let's bow our heads now as we pray. Father, we do thank you for the words of Holy Scripture and we do pray that today, by your Holy Spirit, you would take my words and speak through them into our hearts to the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to begin this part of the service, as I often do, with some thoughts about the news of the past seven days. Without wanting to state the obvious, it's a funny old time we're experiencing at the moment, isn't it? On the one hand, a certain amount of normality has been creeping back for some weeks. So, people are going on holiday, both... Uh, at home and abroad. Um, all sorts of sports are happening again. Football, cricket, Formula One. It's all got going again. Uh, even popular television programmes like EastEnders, Gogglebox, Britain's Got Talent. They've all come back with fresh episodes. But over the last seven days, the nation's reporters also dusted off their two favourite stories. So we've heard a lot of doom and gloom about Brexit and even more about the resurgence of the coronavirus. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I've not looked at the latest Brexit situation in much detail. Um, so I'm not in a position just yet to tell you whether I think we should be worried or not. Uh, about this week's developments in the never-ending saga that is Brexit. We'll have to put that on hold. But COVID-19, yes, 
that definitely is on the increase again. The Prime Minister uh, this week unveiled his rule of six uh, and the city of Birmingham, the second biggest city in the UK, Birmingham has gone back to a time of no mixing, no travelling and only being allowed to see people who are in your support bubble. So they're not quite in the lockdown like we all were in April but they are not far away and that's because the coronavirus is not just going to leave us uh, and disappear magically rather in order to beat it as communities and as a nation a certain amount of costly measures are going to be necessary and it is that idea of no pain no gain which is our link to today's Bible reading where we picked up the story of Moses leading the Israelite people's escape from slavery in Egypt and those of you who have been watching uh, these YouTube videos each Sunday and we'll remember that last week we caught up with all the plagues by which God had been convincing a reluctant Pharaoh to let his people go. And if you've got very good memories, you'll recall that the plagues were blood instead of water, problems with frogs, gnats, flies and the livestock, boils and hail, locusts and darkness. All of those nine plagues had a negative impact upon the nation of Egypt and yet even after that plague of darkness, the ninth plague, Pharaoh still is disinclined to grant freedom to the Israelites because he thinks if hundreds of thousands of slaves leave Egypt how are the privileged people going to continue to live in the manner to which they've become accustomed. And before we get on our high horses too much, it is more or less the same issue that William Wilberforce fought against when he was trying to get slavery abolished in this country. So last Sunday we heard Moses telling Pharaoh that the next plague would be the death of all the firstborn of Egypt. And unfortunately for the people of Egypt, that plague does come, the firstborn do die, and the people of that nation, they beg the Israelites to leave because they can't bear any more tragedy. And at the end of Exodus chapter 12, the people of Israel leave Egypt. And in case we're wondering how they found their way, chapter 13 reveals that God guided his people with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And the Lord leads the Israelites towards the wilderness and towards the Red Sea, which brings us more or less to today's lesson. We heard when the king of Egypt was told that the people of Israel had fled the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people of Israel and they said what have we done letting Israel leave our service and with 600 chariots and the chariot was the top military hardware of the day with 600 chariots Pharaoh set out in pursuit of the people of God. Well, of course, chariots and horses go a lot faster than people on foot. So, Pharaoh and his army catch up to the Israelites. And as Pharaoh and his chariots draw near to the Israelites, the people of God see them and understandably they are very frightened 
Chapter 14 tells us that they cried out to Moses, Was it because there are no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? But Moses replies, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will accomplish for you today. And as we heard, the pillar of cloud makes a barrier between the Egyptians and the Israelites. The Lord parts the Red Sea. The people of God escape through the sea. But the waters return on the Egyptians and the Egyptians all perish. I'm going to make now three brief points about what we might learn from this tale. Firstly, with the thought of those dying Egyptians still fresh in our minds, I'd like to suggest that resisting the will of God brings a load of problems and a load of pain. You might remember the prophet Jonah, who when God calls him to give a message of repentance to the people of Nineveh, decides he doesn't want to and instead he goes off in completely the opposite direction. And what happens? Well God sends a storm, the ship that Jonah is on gets into big trouble in the storm, the sailors throw jo Jonah overboard, he's lucky to get swallowed by a big fish and then to be vomited up on the seashore. Well, what happens to Pharaoh in the story of the Exodus is even worse. Moses declares to Pharaoh that the will of God is for his people to leave. But because of Pharaoh's intransigence, Moses has to demonstrate the power of God with those ten plagues all of which really hurt the nation of Egypt and its people. And lo and behold, it's the people of Egypt who are the ones who eventually beg the Israelites to leave their nation. That could have been the end of the matter. But no, Pharaoh wouldn't let it lie. He pursues the people of Israel with his army still intent on seeing his will done rather than the will of the Almighty. And of course it ends badly, not just for him but also for all those people who were following his leadership. Resisting the will of God brings a load of problems and a load of pain. But the Israelites are going along with the will of God. So, you might well ask, does that mean that life is one long sweet song for them? Well, no, it doesn't. Because here's my second point, the good Lord doesn't always lead us in green pastures. For reasons of his own, Sometimes the good Lord chooses to lead his people through the valley of death. Being one of God's people may well be about being changed from glory into glory. But unfortunately, the process of growth and transformation is often difficult and challenging and painful. Years after the Exodus, Jesus told his disciples that if they wanted to follow him, they must take up their cross. And that has not changed. So my second point, good Lord does not always lead us, even if we're going along with his will. He does not always lead us in pastures green. 
third point. And yet, God does part the Red Sea. God's people do make their escape. Liberation does come for those who follow God's will. Despite their fears and despite their reservations, liberation does come. So what? You may say, well that's all very nice. What difference does it make to us wherever we are watching today? Well, of course, the moral of the story today is not to be like Pharaoh. Stubborn, intransigent and ultimately leading those dependent upon us into oblivion. Rather, the role models in today's lesson are, amazingly, the people of Israel. Because despite their fears and despite their reservations, they listen to Moses, they follow the will of God, and through doing so, they experience liberation. So my prayer for each one of us is that by his Holy Spirit, God would give us the grace we need to take heed of his voice, to follow his will, and to be led not to oblivion, but rather to the liberation of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads now and pray that it might be so. Father God, we do thank you for the Holy Scriptures. We do thank you for what we've heard from them today. And we thank you for their honesty, uh, both about um, the intransigence and stubbornness of uh, people who at times do not want to submit themselves to your will, but also um, the benefits uh, of following your will and hearing your voice and that ultimately that brought the people of Israel liberation and Lord we do pray that by your Holy Spirit you give us the grace not to be like Pharaoh not to be choosing um, oblivion choosing death choosing a curse but rather that you would give us the grace to choose life, to choose you, to choose obedience to your will. And through doing so, yes, perhaps at times uh, to be in the valley of death and not in the pastures green. But ultimately we know you will bring us liberation. And we thank you. And we praise you. Amen. Going to join together now uh, in our main time of prayer. As usual, I'll be using a response and it is the normal response I'll be using. So when you hear me, pray the phrase, Lord, in your mercy. Would you please respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your presence here with us by your Holy Spirit. We do ask that by that same Spirit you would guide our prayers now. They might achieve what you would have them achieve and might glorify the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do thank you um, for the privilege that it is to live in such a beautiful part of your world. We do remember that the beauty we enjoy is just a pale reflection of your far greater beauty. 
And yet we're also conscious that there are many places in this, your world, where your beauty is not reflected as clearly as it might be. We do bring before you now some of those places and situations. And Lord, we do think of everywhere where there is suffering at this time, everywhere where the coronavirus has people living in fear or suffering. And Lord, we do pray. We pray for those uh, with the responsibility of leading us at this time and leading the other nations of the world that you would guide each one by your Holy Spirit to make the best decisions available to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do think of our community, our schools that have started their new academic year this week. And we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon our teachers and support staff, our parents and governors, and of course the children and the young people of all our educational establishments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we think also of everyone who is working uh, so tirelessly at this time uh, to battle the coronavirus and to support and uphold those who feel vulnerable and at risk. My Lord, we thank you for the many uh, professional people and the many people who voluntarily are doing excellent work um, to support our communities and particularly the vulnerable in our communities at this time. We ask, Lord, for your blessing upon our, our surgeries, our hospitals, um, the medical people who work there and all who support them. And we think also, Lord, of those um, volunteers, those carers, uh, those good neighbours, and we pray for your blessing upon each one of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also remember those who are ill or infirm at this time. We do bring before you, in particular, Mick and Emma, Marjorie and Julie, Martin, Eric and John, Celia and Evelyn, Sue and Brenda, Raymond, Theo, Paul, Anna, Rita, Elizabeth, Joyce, Anne and Rick. In the quietness, let's bring before God those others known to us who especially need his touch at this time. Oh God, for these who we've named, and for those who we've not named but whose names are known to you, we do ask for your comfort and your peace your perseverance and your endurance while they wait for your healing. We do pray that you bring them ultimately to a place of health and of wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also remember those who have passed on from this life to the next. May light perpetual shine upon them. Grant them everlasting peace. We pray especially today for Ada, for Evelyn and for Lillian. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we do pray for ourselves, thanking you for what we've heard from the scriptures today particularly uh, the account of your provision for the people of Israel to escape Pharaoh uh, and to know liberation. 
And Lord, we do ask that by your Holy Spirit you'd give us the grace not to be like Pharaoh, stubborn and intransigent and uh, set on our own will and our own way. Rather that you'd give us the grace uh, to emulate the people of Israel in their willingness to be led by Moses to obey your will and through doing so to experience your good liberation for them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join together now in the Lord's Prayer in its traditional form, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to our final blessing. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.